Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Wonder Woman. I give the movie a B plus. Wonder Woman is the fourth live action film in the DC Extended Universe movie franchise. It has a lot riding on it. First of all, it's a big budget movie, so obviously uh, the studio wants it to be successful. But more importantly, it's the first female superhero movie since the disasters of Catwoman and Elektra. So just the idea of a female superhero movie uh, puts a lot of pressure on this film. And the response to the DCEU films has been mixed at best. Some have been uh, very successful financially, but not as financially successful if they had better critical ratings or even fan reception, uh, especially the most important film so far, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. A lot of mixed reviews, a lot of mixed results. So this movie pretty much needs to be successful for female superheroes, for the DCEU, and of course for the studio in general. And I'm very proud to say that I think it's a very wonderful movie. It really deserves an A-, minus, but unfortunately I'm going to give it a B+, plus, and I'll explain that in a little bit. As far as the things I liked about this movie, I pretty much liked everything. I love the costumes, I love the action, I love the pacing, I even liked Chris Pine. Chris Pine is pretty much a mixed bag with me. Uh, I think the best feature of this movie is the solid story. This is the most solid story in all of the DCEU movies so far. And while I can pick out little pieces here and there in the story that makes me go, hmm, what, or whatever, and nothing breaks my immersion, nothing breaks me from the scene, nothing breaks me from the movie, nothing makes me go, wait, what, or huh, or I follow comics and I don't quite understand what's going on. Uh, which is what you find a lot in the other movies. So this film is solid. There's things I would love to know more, things I'd like to sort of question, things that, that are kind of weird, but there's nothing that breaks my immersion. There's nothing that breaks the story that makes me go, wait a second. And even casual moviegoers have watched other films and think about, wait a second. Or you can see weird things that were shown in the trailers but not in the movie or this just doesn't make sense or you gotta watch it three or four or five times to understand it. And that's probably because Zack Snyder isn't the director of this movie and it's just helped treat the story. Uh, for instance, Suicide Squad is a narrative mess but it's much more enjoyable. Uh, and this movie, you see Snyder's fingerprints. For instance, this movie relies heavily on flashbacks. There's even a point where someone's telling a flashback story that started by one character and finished with another character, even though there's no transition of saying from one person to another person. They're just both somehow telling the same story. But still, it doesn't break you as a, as like uh, Batman v Superman, where you have flashbacks and premonitions and imagining your ghost father and, and then the flash thing <laughs> so it's like there's nothing in this one movie for in fact the whole movie is really one long flashback uh but still it's the most solid story that's why it really should deserve an a minus but unfortunately i'm going to give it a b plus and well here's why normally when i judge a film or when any critic tries to judge a film, you try to judge the movie as is. Uh, you don't try to judge it by scenes that you know were cut and should have been in there but wasn't. You don't try to judge it by if you somehow read the original screenplay or original treatments and, okay, what well, this is the real result. And even though this is part of a movie franchise, you pretty much try to treat it as its own movie. But because this movie takes place after Batman v Superman, it leaves a lot of questions unanswered. Batman v Superman introduced Wonder Woman, and there were some questions. For instance, uh, what has she been doing since uh, 
the world war and why does she give up being a superhero and you know things like that so you expect those questions to be answered in this film and they're not they're not addressed at all in fact it's even more confusing because diana in this movie she wants to go to man's world she wants to help fight the war she wants to end Ares. she wants to help humanity she's like it's our sacred duty it's our sacred vow it's our sacred uh, honor. This is what we're supposed to do. And the Amazons don't want to go, so she rebels against her mother and the Amazons to go uh, to the world and help fight. And by the end of the movie, she's uh, sad for her losses, but still she seems to want to continue fighting. And then we jump to present day, which takes place after Batman v Superman, so she's back uh, in the fold and she's helping Bruce Wayne out, you know, Batman, and we see her triumphantly leap into action, but it's like, okay, but what happened between the end of that origin story and Batman v Superman that made you want to quit? I mean, you're several centuries years old, so the time between the war and that Batman v Superman was just a couple of decades, which would be, what, a few weeks in your perspective. So what happened in those weeks that made you want to give up being a, a hero? You know, uh, or even where did you get your weapons? Because in, we learned in this movie she was banished for uh, leaving Paradise Island. So in the Batman v Superman movie, uh, she has a sword, and the sword is strong enough to cut Doomsday. But in this movie, when she's fighting Ares, which she, what she thinks is the God Slayer, Ares destroys the sword. So at some point in time, she somehow got another sword, a sword strong enough to cut uh, through Doomsday. So again... What happened? And most importantly, uh, we don't know about Diana Prince today. In Batman v Superman, she wants to find this photo because she wants to keep hidden what she did during the war and her, I guess, her identity during the war, but she's not really keeping a low profile. She rides in uh, sports cars. She goes to fancy galas. She wears these gorgeous gowns. And in uh, the Wonder Woman movie opens up, she's in, uh, I think, Paris and working at the Louvre. And again, it's like, okay, Bruce Wayne is a millionaire playboy and he acts all goofy and silly and womanizing to distract the public from thinking that he might be Batman. Superman, he's the mild-mannered reporter, you know, no one's uh, to blend in to humanity so he can walk amongst humanity. Whereas Wonder Woman, she doesn't wear a mask. Uh, they tease a mask in this movie with uh, some glasses, but still, she doesn't wear a mask. She wear, she drives expensive uh, cars. She goes to fancy parties. And now with the cell phone age where pretty much everyone's photographed, even if it's uh, someone's selfie and they get caught in the background. So it's like, why are you trying to keep your identity secret if you're not doing Wonder Woman? And why can't you just easily say, oh, yeah, that's my grandma? You know, so there's a whole, <laughs> it was like, what, who are you now? Today, why did you give up being a hero? What do you do for a living right now? Who is the Empress now? None of those questions are answered. In this movie, Wonder Woman, she's known as the God Killer. And she winds up killing a god. So it's like, and she even winds up harnessing the power of lightning. And it's like, okay, if she's this powerful, she practically becomes Neo, okay? You know how in the, the first major movie, Neo, like, she, he comes back to life, and the agents shoot at him, and he's like, no. And the bullet says, stop. She sort of does that in this Wonder Woman movie when she sort of just super powers up and gets focused. So it's like, if you were that powerful, then why aren't you, why are you struggling against dudes? You should have been a lot tougher against dudes. This is going to be addressed in Justice League movie or later films. Are they just not going to matter at all? Are they hoping, okay, well, we'll just not talk about that, but if maybe one day we do a sequel, we'll address those sort of things. No, you shouldn't do that. It should be all contained in this film answering certain questions. I want to know what made her go from, oh, we got to help fight. We got to stop Aries. We got to you know, protect the innocent, protect the people to... Nah, I ain't gonna mess it. I ain't got time for that. I gotta go to a gala. <laughs> if this Wonder Woman movie had come out before Batman v Superman, 
then as they crafted the versus story, they would have realized, okay, uh, Wonder Woman has these powers. Here's how we're going to effectively craft the fight with Doomsday. That's one of the reasons why this movie loses points because even though it's solid by itself, it's just raising a lot more questions that would have been handled if the character had been introduced first, then used in a uh, ensemble cast, as opposed to trying to make an ensemble cast and then figure out the characters overall. Hopefully they'll learn from this film. But still, uh, a lot of questions from Batman v Superman unanswered, and because of the events of Wonder Woman, more questions get raised, and because of all those questions that don't break the narrative uh, of the specific story of the movie, but breaks the narrative of the overall uh, franchise-connected movie, because all these movies, remember, are connected. One affects the other, or at least suppose affects the other, and because of that, this rating gets a little uh, lower than it should be. So it should be an A-, minus, but unfortunately, I got to give it a B+. Plus. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, please share this video. Please remember to like or even dislike this video. I uh, appreciate all comments. I appreciate all feedback. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.